Hello everybody, my name is Oliver Seinhauser and I will have a look with you, together with you, at a tool called Maria Backup, a tool which is, in my opinion, much too rarely used. Uh, first of all, a few words about, my, about myself. Uh, I am working for a sw small Swiss uh, consulting company we are working in the MariaDB ecosystem. Uh, in this ecosystem, we provide support services. We do on-site consulting. Uh, we do training remote on-site with the customer or inside our training facilities. And we also provide remote DBA services, which is probably much more appropriate in the current times. So what do I want to talk about in the next few minutes. First, a few thoughts about backup in general. Then the steps to do a Maria backup. What are the necessary steps? Then performance differences between MariaDB dump and MariaDB backup. Then we'll have a look at the point in time recovery, how you can do a point in time recovery after the MariaDB backup. And then another question is, where has my time gone uh, during my restore? So let's start first with the philosophical questions. Why do we need backups at all? Uh, what I hear at customers very often is that we need backups because of hardware crashes. Yes, that's not completely wrong. Uh, if you have hardware crash, you probably need a backup or better a restore, but that does not happen too often nowadays. And in such situation, it's probably much better having a high availability solution with a failover. So a failover will take less than 10, 10 seconds, uh, which is much more faster than doing a restore. So. A restore could also help if your hardware crashes, but it's not a very fast method. It will take many minutes up to hours, depending on your infrastructure and your database size. So why do we need backups? Uh, for setting up slaves or setting up testing systems from your production system. Uh, here, we typically do not have hard time constraints, so that would be a valid necessity for setting up uh, systems with backups. But then we come to the point which is much more important than anything else, which is logical errors. Uh, logical errors uh, is the most frequent issue we see on site with customers, and it can happen everywhere to everybody. And the problem with logical errors is they will spread very fast and very easily. You do not have to tune those queries. They will happen instantaneous and your system is gone. So logical errors is one of the most often seen problem where we need a restore from our backup. Before we start, uh, one thing about terminology. Since MariaDB 10.4 and 10.5, uh, the names of all the programs have changed, has changed from MySQL dump to MariaDB dump. MySQL command line interface is called MariaDB now. Maria backup is called MariaDB backup. And MySQL bin log is called MariaDB bin log. And the same applies to all other applications belonging to the MariaDB server. Uh, another thing we should consider before starting is that there are different types of backup. This is not related to MariaDB only. Uh, this applies to all database systems. So there, on one side, there is the logical backup. Uh, this is also called a dump. And the tool is MariaDB dump. Uh, so this is one possibility how you can do backups. What te technically happens here is just for each schema, we look for each table, and then we do a select star from table into out file. This is basically what happens inside a MariaDB dump. There is some little magic around that, but that's the biggest part of the work, work uh, MariaDB dump has to do. On the other side, we have physical backups. 
Uh, here we have Maria Backup with the tool MariaDB Backup, or an alternative to this would be a snapshots for logical volume manager file systems or virtual machines. What technically happens here is just a copy from the data directory to our backup location. This is what physically happens. So it's a significant difference between a logical and a physical backup. Let's have a look at the restore recovery metrics. So it's not only about backup, it's also about the restore. Uh, what, what is the main goal of a restore or uh, recovery? Uh, when you ask the managers, they would say, uh, I want to have my database back immediately without loss of any data and at no costs. Okay, so let them dream a little bit more and let's have a look at realistic recovery goals. Um, when I, uh, in contact with customers, we see very often that they are already happen, happy if the restore and the recovery works at all. So the primary goal must be a working restore and recovery process. If you look a little bit more in details how we could measure further, there are two uh, metrics defined. One is called the recovery point objective. Um, this metrics describe how much data can we accept to lose uh, between the last backup and the incident. Then we have a second metric which is called the recovery time objective and this describes how long does a restore or a recovery take. So whenever you set up and design a backup and restore system, you should think about these two metrics to verify if your chosen backup restore technology fits your requirements. If you want to read a little bit more about it, you can look at Wikipedia. I have linked here the source of this nice graph. Another topic uh, we have to look at is about the granularity of your backups. So what you can do is you do a full instance backup. That means everything which is located inside data directory will be backup. We call this a full backup. What you also could do is you just backup several schemas, for example, test schema or world schema. We are talking here about a partial backup or a schema backup. Or a really special case would be that you only do a backup of one or several tables, for example, city or country in the world schema. So this is even less than a schema backup, or you can also backup tables from different schemata. We are also talking here about a partial backup or a table backup. So now the question is about the restore. What do, you, that, what do we need to restore? Do we res need to restore the full instance or only one schema or only one or several tables? And the next question is, is this possible at all, what we want to achieve? And if yes, how do we achieve that? Uh, when we do the backup, we typically do not yet know what we have to restore. The full instance, one schema or one table. So I personally recommend you here to use a full backup because from a full backup, you theoretically can do all different kinds of restores. So now let's come to the Maria backup itself, uh, to the steps you have to do to achieve a Maria backup. Uh, first of all, the Maria backup consists of two different steps. The first step is the backup step. This step basically copies away all the database files to your backup location. And then the second step is the prepare step. The old naming of prepare step is apply lock. And what it basically does, it makes your backup you have taken in the first step and makes it consistent. And only a prepared backup can be used for restore. Uh, 
The prepare step can be done either at backup time or at re restore time. We recommend you to do it at backup time because at backup time you have more or less all the time in the world and during the restore you are in a hurry. So let's have a look at the full restore. What do you have to do to achieve a full restore? First of all, if you want to do a full restore with MariaDB Backup, you have to shut down your instance. That means you are out of service for the application. Then you have to remove and clean up all the data directory, the contents of that file, otherwise the restore would not work. Then you have to do the prepare of the backup. If you not have done it yet during your backup phase, then you have to do it now during the restore. And then finally comes the restore steps. This copies all the backup files back from your backup location to the original data directory. Finally, you have to do a change owner of the database files uh, because if you are working as the operating system user root and it copies the file that will belong to root and the MySQL daemon or the MariaDB daemon cannot do anything with files belonging to user root. So this is a feature request from me to the Maria Backup developers. If you are working with SA Linux, then you have to restore the SA Linux configuration to the database files. So now, these are the commands you have to use. First, you do the first step, the MariaDB backup with the backup option. And then you have to do the prepare and in the restore, clean up data directory, copy all the files back and then change the ownership. So let's have a look on a live demo here, how it works. Uh, this happens now in real time, so it's a real time demo. First, we do the backup with the option backup here, and we backup the database to a virtual tape library. This will take some time, it does some preparation work here. Starts hopefully soon. Yes, it starts now and you see here copying the files away to the backup location. From time to time this message log scan up to. It will also copy all the changes which happen on that database. Will they copy away again? And then copy all the files until the whole database has been backed to the backup location. Now the backup is completed. Next step is the prepare phase. So we have to run Maria backup with the minus minus prepare option, the apply log. Uh, what happens here is the database or another database is started on the backup database. Then the transaction log of InnoDB are read and applied to the database and the pseudo database is stopped again. So let's have a look at the restore, how the restore will, will, work, uh, will work. First, we have to do the cleanup. So we remove everything from var lib mysql, all the contents. Then we do the restore with the option copy back. So all the data files from our backup location is, co is copied back to our data directory. Data directory. And the final step, as we discussed before, is changing the ownership of all the database files so the MySQL daemon can read all its file again. Now we are ready to start this instance, but this is something I do not want to show you here. So, in this whole process, I have uh, two feature requests for the Maria Backup developers, just in case they are listening listening to me now. Uh, the first thing I would like to have is an option backup and prepare to combine the first two steps into one step. And the second thing is what would be really cool for Maria Backup when you memorize the ownership of the database file during the backup phase and restore the ownership automatically if possible during the copy back or the move back operation. 
So let's have a look at the performance differences between Maria Backup and MariaDB Dump. Uh, I tested it with our little data warehouse, which is nearly 30 gigabyte in size. So we did the same backup with a logical backup with MariaDB Dump. And here the backup took 200, nearly 230 seconds, also nearly four minutes. So let's have a look how the backup uh, was taken with MariaDB backup. Here the backup was taking just 180 seconds, so it was roughly 25 seconds fast, 25% uh, faster. This is not dramatic. Uh, we just have to know already with a very small database of 30 gigabytes of size, there are difference in backup performance. So let's have a look at the backup size. With MariaDB dump backup, the backup is uncompressed, only 17 gigabytes in size. And the backup with MariaDB backup is nearly 29 gigabyte of size, which is technically the size of our, of our whole database. So let's have a look at the prepare phase. Uh, to provoke it, I have uh, set a lot of load to that database. So the prepare phase itself took nearly one and a half minute. If you have much more traffic, it can even take many minutes, up to half an hour for the prepare phase. So be prepared for a long prepare phase. And the restore time for the 30 gigabytes was nearly the backup time. So it took more or less 180 seconds to restore this database again. Now let's compare it with the restore with the MariaDB dump. The restore with the MariaDB dump took nearly 40 minutes. And that's the main reason I really recommend to use MariaDB backup as your preferred backup method if you have medium size to big size databases. So let's have a look at the point-in-time recovery. So what is point-in-time recovery for? So point-in-time recovery is for reducing data loss. Um, theoretically, with point-in-time recovery, you can recover all your data, all your transaction up to the last transaction. If you think, when are you doing backups? Typically, this is at night. Let's say at 2 o'clock in the morning, you do your backup and 14 o'clock in the afternoon, somebody destroys your database. So restoring up to 2 o'clock in the morning now is always possible with the technology as you s I just have shown you. But what about the data between 2 o'clock in the morning and 14 o'clock in the afternoon? So you lost 12 hours of traffic. If that is okay for you, then you don't need point-in-time recovery. If losing 12 hours of data is not okay for you, then you really should think about point-in-time recovery. So how is that done? Before you start with point-in-time recovery, you have to enable the binary logging. This is done with the MariaDB variable log bin. You have to set it to a useful value. Then you have to do a full backup. And from this full backup on, you always are capable to do a point-in-time recovery. The only thing what you need is the setup point for point-in-time recovery, and this is stored in the file extra backup bin log info in your backup location. And then the point-in-time recovery is quite easy. You need the tool called MariaDB bin log. Uh, you have to define the start position from here where you want to start your point in time recovery. The start position is found in this file extra backup bin log info. You have to define your stop date time, so that would be short before 14 o'clock. And then you have to list all your binary log files from start position from your backup up to the stop date time and pipe it to the MariaDB client, and then all the binary logs will be reapplied. So finally, you have a fully recovered database. 
Another topic I want to talk about with you is where has the time gone? So where do I lose time during my backup and my restore? We have seen the backup of my 30 gigabyte data warehouse was taking real, nearly three minutes. Uh, backup time is mostly not relevant. We have theoretically 24 hours a day for doing our backup. But the prepare and the restore uh, they are relevant because they are counting in, in our restore time objective. So in our situation, we had nearly one and a half minutes for the prepare, and it can take much more time depending on the traffic you have during your backup. And then the restore itself, it took 172 seconds, which is more or less the same time like it took for the backup. So what else do we have to consider for our recovery time object objective? Uh, we have to do some pre and post restore tasks. Shut down the database, the change ownership, the restore con, start up the instance. So allow, how long do you need for doing these tasks? 60 seconds, three minutes, uh, 300 seconds, 50 minutes, depends on how fast you're working. Then, for the point-in-time recovery, you have to find out the begin and the end of the point-in-time recovery. So, how, how long do you need for this evaluation? 15 minutes? 900 seconds? Are you faster? Are you slower? The begin is easy, you just can pick it out from the file. But the end is a little bit more tricky. So this costs you probably most of the time to find where should you stop with point-in-time recovery. And then some non-technical problems you will have is communication and synchronization overhead. You have to ask, may I restore everything or may I just restore a table? You have to ask the people, you have to synchronize, can I do it now? What should I recover? Until when? Etc. Etc. And this will easily take 30 minutes up to two hours just to find out are you allowed to do it and when should you do it? And then the point in time recovery itself, uh, how long will it take? It depends heavily on the traffic and the volume you had during your backup and your incident. So in worst case, it can even be more than 24 hours if you have to restore a full day with binary logs. And now let's compare all those times with your recovery time objective. What is defined in your SLA? Two hours? Four hours? Eight hours? Two hours is quite sportive. Four hours should be doable if you have a decent amount of infrastructure. So there are a few topics left uh, which are more advanced. Uh, this is partial backup, partial restore, incremental backup, incremental restore, and point-in-time recovery of just a table, of just a schema. Uh, this is a little bit too much uh, for the beginning. I have just linked you here some links to our website where you can read more about this topic. So if you have some questions uh, I'm now here for the next few minutes for you to talk about backup and restore questions. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation about MariaDB Backup and I wish you a nice fast time at the MariaDB Developer Room. <laughs>